Show. It's time for TJ's Time Capsule. With the Premiership Cup never too far from sight, the North Melbourne players gathered for a private get-together before facing the masses. Errol Street was blocked off for the lunchtime party and more than 2,000 supporters were there to make the most of it. This was a day to congratulate not just the senior team, but the North Melbourne Reserves who defeated Essendon in their grand final. Lord Mayor Ivan Deverson honoured the 40 plus players and coaches. Several, including Dennis Pagan, were given special achievement certificates. There are a lot of reasons why our guys wanted to be successful this year. One of them is because of the supporters we've got at North Melbourne. And although Pagan had his own pocket of support among the faithful, the North hero remains skipper Wayne Carey. You'll ask any player that their, their, I suppose, biggest hate is fickle supporters and I can tell you that North Melbourne have none of those and uh, I'd like to... Writer's cramp has become a common ailment among the players since the final siren sounded on Saturday afternoon. A seemingly endless line of autograph hunters waited anxiously for a mere stroke of the pen. The players will be together again tomorrow night for the club's best and fairest awards. Well, there it was, 1996, the celebrations post-premiership for the North Melbourne Footy Club. And you saw uh, two of their greats on stage there in uh, Wayne Carey, the captain. And this man, Dennis Pagan, the coach who joins us. Hello, Dennis. Yeah, good morning, Tony. Hope things are going well. Yeah, they are, thanks. Uh, I'll tell you what, though, as I throw it open to the panel, I don't think Dennis has aged. Uh... No, he hasn't. <laughs> no, he still looks good. And we all know he's a super coach, of course, but yeah. uh, he played 120 games at North Melbourne as a hard-nosed back pocket and 23 games at South oh. Melbourne. Here, there's, there's a footy card. There he is there. Oh, well, the, look, uh, at that. look at the side booms. <laughs> and, and there, well, that's, that's oh. Dennis, yeah. <laughs> so there you are. But a very good player you were, D, also. Oh, I don't know about that, Bill. I think it was a pretty ordinary conveyance. Uh, <laughs> got charged with grand larceny, stealing VFL games. <laughs> uh, you were unlucky, Dennis, weren't you? you? You had a knee injury that kept you out of the, the famous first premiership in 1975 for North? I uh, had a lot of injuries, uh, Damon. That's a real good excuse and uh, keep spreading that around. Hey, Dennis, <laughs> what about your first uh, passion for coaching? When did it first start? Did you have it in you as a player or did it come after that? Well, when I finished up, um, you know, I wanted to be involved in footy. Uh, Matthew, uh, you say to yourself, what can I do? Um, I coached in the VFA with the Yarraville Football Club, playing coach. That was terrific. And uh, it just took off from there. I coached North Melbourne under 19 for 10 years. Essendon Reserves and Kevin's assistant for one year and um, got the job at North Melbourne in 93. <laughs> Hey, Dennis, the term Pagan's Paddock uh, was probably dubbed by the media, but was that your coaching or was that more a Wayne Carey-driven thing to get that Pagan's Paddock going? Yeah, we, uh, we, we used to do that when I was under-19 coach. Um, we used to play a fo uh, uh, forward line, six forwards up the ground and had people like Lee Tudor, who was playing the North under-19s at the time, just run onto the ball when he kicked it over the back, kicked a lot of goals that way and... We, uh, we we used it. It worked a hell of a lot better with Wayne Carey involved. And we didn't call it uh, Pagan's Paddock. I think we called it three-quarter ground concertina football. Um, I think Jared Healy was the person who uh, uh, coined that phrase and it probably stuck from there. Dennis, you, you were known as a hard taskmaster and um, it was all about the team and not about the individual. How would you go coaching the modern-day football? We see the Melbourne captain, Max Gorn, his haircut has come under some criticism from Craig Hutchison on Footy Classified. How would you have coped if your skipper rocked up with a, with a blonde mohawk? I'll tell you what, he'd be starting on the bench. I was coached by, <laughs> I was coached by a hard uh, taskmaster. You weren't even allowed to have beards with Ron Barassi. And, OK, when I see some of the, the players with the buns on their head, uh, you shake your head and think, Gee, <laughs> what are we doing? Hey, Dennis, back in 1997, preliminary final, which obviously lost, Wayne Schwass tells a really good story that you made a beeline for him and Glenn Archer in the race after the game Ooh. because they were out suspended. But Arch was the smart one who docked out the back and uh, Schwatter copped the full wrath. <laughs> well, it was interesting because both got suspended on uh, undisciplined petty things and they uh, were standing at the bottom of the race and after the game, steam pouring out in the ears and uh, Swatter was still standing there. How smart was that? So <laughs> I gave him a rocket. I think I, I, think I said, uh, you cost us. There might have been a, uh, a nice describing word somewhere in there. And, uh, um, yeah, but that was it. And uh, it looked pretty expressive when you see it on TV. Hey, Dennis, uh, we love watching those moments uh, back in time. What about the team you despise most as the coach of North Melbourne? You had some great rivalries over the journey. 
Yeah, I didn't despise anybody. Yeah. The media tried to uh, pump those things up. Um, I, every team we played against, I wanted to win, and I didn't get personal about it. And uh, if the media wanted to go along with it, I'd go along with it. But at the end of the day, we just wanted to win. Yeah, Dennis, I think that was Matthew's way of getting you to talk about him. But anyway, you, you didn't quite take the uh, you didn't quite take the bait there, mate. But um, you, you, how, well, actually, how was it coaching against someone like Matthew? No, TJ. Um, yeah, Matthew was uh, there. He was um, what they call him, the velvet sledgehammer. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. I think Vic Mark still got his um, knuckle imprint in the back of his head. Uh, um, we had some wonderful battles with the uh, with the bombers and. Uh, yeah, Kevin was always ready to uh, um, smart things up with marshmallows and whatever it was, and uh, we went along with it. Dennis, uh, you mentioned the media there before, and uh, you know trying to blame the media for the uh, some of the fiascos that were going on there. Um, but you did have a, uh, a testy relationship with the media, it must be said. Now, I just want to take you back to Princess Park. This is when you were coaching Carlton, and obviously there were some questions being asked, or just one question on multiple occasions, <laughs> and this was your response to that. Let's talk footy, eh? Sorry, just one more. No, no, no more. Okay. No more. Yes, no more. No more. Couldn't you no have... more. <laughs> <laughs> so you, <laughs> you certainly didn't uh, mince words when it came to the media and you almost made mince meat of some of the media. I remember mm. at North Melbourne, you, you walked past me once and said, you can have a spell for a couple of weeks, son. So uh, <laughs> I sort of... I took that as a suspension. Uh, and Damien no, Barrett, no. you had your own run-in with Dennis. Yeah, I think we got on reasonably well, didn't we, Dan? But um, there was one uh, one gay day out at uh, the Monica Oval in Canberra. You got me in a pre-season game. You somehow managed to clear out the entire room and you got me into a corner. And for uh, 20 seconds, I was really, really fearful of what you were about to do. You didn't do it, but I was really scared. Dennis has just remembered. <laughs> That's amazing. It's funny how you blokes carry those things to the grave. Um, I don't even remember. Oh, I don't, yeah, of course remember, not. I don't remember them now. <laughs> You've got to uh, toughen up a bit, boys. It's a cruel world we live in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Dennis, is there any games that keep you up at night, the, the 98 grand final, the inaccuracies in the first half, or do you just look at it with no regrets? No, I, I think about it constantly, uh, Kane. Um, you know, we were the best side in the competition. Biggest lesson you learn from that, we weren't the best side on the day. But, mm. you know, e even though we made up for a year later when we weren't the best side, 98 eats away from you and... I suppose playing, winning 11 games on the trot going into the grand final, I think most of them were night games, and we cop a 30 degrees day on uh, grand final day, and, you know, I, I constantly think about it and think, well, <coughs> what could have been, but it wasn't to be, and I probably try to focus on 99 when we shouldn't mm. have won it. And Dennis, when you just referenced that, the fact you did get back the next year, would you have beaten, if you'd be honest in answering this question, uh, Essendon, had they got through that year? Probably not. Probably not, but, you know, you never know until you're in it. Um, and plenty of sides have been underdogs and, and could have won, but if, if you were a punter, you'd be back in the Bombers, I could assure you. Dennis, you coached some great players. Obviously, oh. whenever you talk about that, you talk about Wayne Carey. You also coached some real enigmas. Uh, Brendan Favola, for example, how, how was he to coach? Uh, look, he was very, very talented. Um, he's probably his, his uh, own worst enemy. He could have been a far better player than what he was. But he was still an outstanding player. Um, I'm glad to, that, that he's doing so well in the media now and he's really made a success of his life. Is Wayne your child? <laughs> um, we haven't had any DNA testing. <laughs> Most people would say, say that he is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you doing now? You're doing a bit of real estate and also you're a horse trainer, D. Yeah, look, I've got a uh, real estate business and my son's. Uh, the backbone and the brains behind it, and he does all the work. I, I look after a couple of old valued clients, but uh, trying to get a horse trainer's licence, and I hope it comes to fruition uh, pretty shortly. What about the game now, Dennis? Do you enjoy watching it still, or, or not the game it used to be? Well, look, it's easy. You know, if you speak up at my age, people say you're a silly old fool. <laughs> um, look, things haven't changed. If you've got talent, you can do what you like. The key to success, I reckon, is to do the basics well over and over again. If you do that, you've got a chance of, uh, of winning. There's too many people come in, try to reinvent. Too many people come in and try and all these cute things. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple game, and if you keep it simple, you've got a chance of being successful. Mm. And just one final one, Dennis. Uh, if you were 20 years younger and you could have your pick of any team to coach now, who would it be? <clears throat> Probably the Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a challenge. All right then, Dennis, uh, always great to catch up with you and great to know that life's going so well post-coaching. And uh, as I say, you look a million dollars. You haven't aged a year since you gave it away. In fact, I think you look even younger. So uh, thanks for joining us.
white fellas, all the best, and don't carry those uh, grudges to the grave, will you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Good on you, Dennis Pagan, joining us there.